we're tough. Women are tough. We can do a lot, but... Welcome to the Midlife Reinvention Podcast, a podcast helping women in career and life transitions achieve clarity on their next steps so they can transform uncertainty into an energizing next chapter. I'm your host, Kavita Ahuja, and the founder of It's My Time Now Coaching. If you're wondering what's next in your career or life, you are in the right place. Through solo and guest episodes, you'll gain practical tips, tools, and inspiration to help you uncover blocks, gain confidence, and be, do, and have what you want. I rediscovered myself after the age of 50, and I know you can too. It's my time now to help you do just that. I'm so excited you're here. Let's dive in. Hi there, and welcome to another episode of the Midlife Reinvention Podcast. I'm your host, Kavita Ahuja, and in today's episode, we're going to discuss how to become a female entrepreneur in midlife with resilience and courage. Have you ever wondered how someone can turn life's toughest challenges into their greatest strengths and build a thriving business later in life? In today's episode, you will discover how my next guest, Teresa Intag, transformed her experiences with childhood adversity and midlife overwhelm into a powerful journey of entrepreneurship. If you're feeling stuck or uncertain about your next career step, this episode is for you, my friend. You will learn practical strategies to overcome the fear and self-doubt that often accompanies career transitions, how building a supportive network can accelerate your success, and why it's so important to find and embrace your true passion, even if it takes time and experimentation. So tune in now to uncover the keys to turning your midlife transition into an energizing next chapter and start taking those first steps towards your dream career. And don't forget to stay till the end for our Motivational Monday segment, where we highlight some incredible women who became successful entrepreneurs later in life, despite great challenges in their way. So why do we highlight these people? To stress to you that if you are feeling stuck, you have a little voice inside of you that is telling you to do something different, but you are scared, you will be inspired by these stories of resilience and courage. I'll see you at the end with the key takeaways. Welcome everyone to the Midlife Reinvention Podcast, a podcast helping women in career and life transitions achieve clarity on their next steps so they can transform their uncertainty into an energizing next chapter. I'm your host, Kavita Ahuja, And today, you will be inspired by a story of great resilience, courage, and ambition as I speak with Teresa Intag. Teresa is a founder and CEO of Intag Hire, and she is a co-founder of Tag for HR, and she has deep experience in human resources and talent acquisition. She has a passion for running small businesses with innovative and flexible models that can free up time and optimize your budget and mental health. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Kavita. It's great to be here. You're welcome. Yeah. So one of the things about this podcast is we really love to talk about how women, accomplished women such as yourselves have gone to where, like, how did you start and how did you get to where you are right now? And so maybe you could start by telling us how your upbringing, perhaps your childhood, maybe any challenges that you faced in your in your family, in your childhood, influenced your journey mm-hmm. to eventually becoming an entrepreneur. I know as an entrepreneur myself, there's childhood things, the lessons you learn, mm-hmm. which shapes the person that you are today. So maybe we can start there and then we can see where this goes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that Childhood uh, challenges actually become superpowers later in life when you walk through them. Growing up, I had in our family, which I think a lot of families have different challenges, but it was multiple divorces, alcoholism, mental health issues were 
in my family of origin. And but at the same time, there were some beautiful strengths that came from those challenges. I learned how to be scrappy, resilient, and and compassionate, which are all really important to me. And I think really important to being an entrepreneur. So now as I walk through kind of how those things affected me and and looking back, I realize that they were all important to get me to where I am today. And I think a lot of people say that. So it's almost cliche, but it's really true. I mean, I think if um, for a long time, though, I'll be honest, for a long time, I think I had more of the poor me mentality in a lot of ways. And then it was later in life that that really started to shift of, oh, this is a part of who I am. And now I get to know who I am separate from those things, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And really starting to understand my own identity and how those things made me a better person. But but like I'm now feeling more and more comfortable in my own shoes, so to speak. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. So you mentioned this shift from the poor me mentality to to now. Like how what what caused that shift? Yeah, I think that a couple of things. I mean, it was a culmination of of, of yeah, a yeah, storm sure. of things. But it was in my career in my forties, and I was kind of realizing, oh, there's a glass ceiling here, and oh my gosh, we don't really have much retirement developed and in our bank account. And how am I going to get there? The window's getting shorter before you get to that retirement age, and. At the same time, I went through some things that my dad was diagnosed with terminal cancer when I was 30 and I was a brand new mom. I had my first son. Yeah. yeah. And but that also really showed me life is short sometimes and life is complex along with my childhood. Those things really set that foundation. But but you also go through this overwhelm that you get stuck in, I think. And here I was in my 30s with trying to take care of my dad, who was basically single at the time, flying back and forth with a one-year-old. And thank God for my mother-in-law. She supported us through that transition, through that whole process. And then mm -hmm. my father was passed away about seven months later after diagnosis. And, and, and all of that, having a complex relationship with him, there's a lot of complexities around the grieving process without going too deep, but that's, it created this overwhelm, I think that started. And then I had my second mm -hmm. child and then I was trying to build my career at the same time. And mm -hmm. it just kind of piled up so that it became like, I'm in a constant state of overwhelm almost and putting myself last, which I think we hear that all the time that women do. And that is where in my forties, as my kids were getting older, I started to look at one, how am I going to make more money? But two, where am I? And what am I doing? Like I I went through all of this challenge and overwhelm, but I'm like worn out. Like, like, yeah. my, my soul was worn out. I'm like, what happened to my soul? Where did it go? And I think that was the realization of just then I started doing things around therapy, around exploring things, coaching, and also realizing, hey, business is not doing it right when it comes to recruiting and human resources. And I was like there could be a better way to provide services because that was my most of my career was in recruiting and human resources. And so there was just a better way to provide support to small to medium sized businesses and create a flexible work environment for the people that worked for me so that mm -hmm. they can deal with their challenges, but not have to step out of their careers completely or have some flexibility in how they handled things. So those two kind of came together. Mm -hmm. to my business. And, and that was when I began the journey of calculated risk, trying it out, moving forward step by step. But also I began to realize, hey, wait a minute, I have some good ideas. Why aren't I looking at that more? Why aren't I embracing? Where's my confidence? And, and so that all started to transition at once. The healing started to happen more. The courage started to shine more. And and I did what I was comfortable with. I didn't leap all the way into entrepreneurship. I realized I can do black and white thinking a lot of times, and that actually gets me in trouble. It's that in-between gray zone is where things really happen. And mm -hmm. so I did. I started the testing the job or the, the company, started testing the service out to see, is mm -hmm. this going to work in the market? Is this yeah. going to be viable? And it was more and more. So I took a year where I was working on the side and trying to run this business and evolved. 
and learned a lot. It's not going to be perfect when you first start as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little messy. And what I was comfortable doing had to grow over that time too. It was a new hat I was wearing and the imposter syndrome is there the whole time. Oh, yeah. And the conf lack of confidence when doing what you're doing, taking this big risk and what you need to know to be on the journey. It was step by step. It was little steps constantly. But I think that was the key for me was just that constant little steps that I needed to take. Yeah. Oh, I want to go back to you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's, no, 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 no. It's, this is all great. And, and the one thing that really sticks out, what you mentioned is the overwhelm, right? And I hear this so much, my clients, right? Women, especially, right? So there's a overwhelm because you're looking after your kids. You're looking after, in your case, your ailing father. You're in this, in this spot where you're looking after everyone. And like you said, it, everything piles up and you don't, you're looking after yourself last. And I think the fact that you actually, when you said in your, in your forties and you actually stopped and said, Hey, what's going on? Where am I? What am I doing? Where is my soul? As you, as you put it. And that's, I think that's wonderful because this is what I encourage. And this is why my program is called It's My Time Now, because it is, this is the perfect time to ask those questions. And I don't think enough women ask themselves that question is, where am I now? What am I doing? And in order to answer those questions, you have to get that courage and you have to actually look what your strengths are. Like, what can you take from what you have and also celebrate and acknowledge all the great things that you've done? Because and I love what you said, too, because you were in the recruiting world before, right? You were okay. recruiting so human you, resources. Yeah. So you took the great things of that, but then you also found what wasn't working mm -hmm. and how you could put your spin on it or how you could improve that. And and that's that's true. Like, as, as, as somebody's going through a career transition, it doesn't mean that they have to give up everything. It's like, OK, if you have an idea, like start small. Like you said, you work, you can do some, you start the business on the side or whatever while you're working and experiment and take one step at a time. So I love that story because it really encapsulates a lot of what women are going through because sometimes they're overwhelmed. They feel like, oh, I can't do it. So I'm just going to stick with what I have. I'm just right. going to remain stuck. Right? right. So this is, and I could have done that too. Like I, I could have stayed where I was because it was comfortable, whatever. Right. Right. But it doesn't allow you to grow. So that's my little rant on that. Hi, my friend, Kavita here. Do you often feel blocked from moving forward? We all feel that way at times. These are referred to as energy blocks. I've created a short, actionable PDF guide to help you release your negative energy blocks. Click the link in the description to download it now for free. Now, let's get back to the episode. But I think that's a really valid point that, that familiarity, you know what you got, what's going to happen with your world made up of. So in a sense, that autopilot is easier. And I think we get stuck in the autopilot mode. Yes. And we fear that adding another thing is just going to tip us over the edge. But the truth is, which this is what was fascinating to me on this journey. The truth is, the more I kind of make that space for myself, the more I explore things that I like, the things that feed my soul, the better everything else around me that used to create the overwhelm. It was a transition phase, though. I mean, it took a while. It took like over a year or two. But but it started to transition and everybody kind of had more of a positive effect from it, including my mm -hmm. family. And so the more I just kept working on myself and growing and taking those baby steps, challenging myself, the more that the family dynamics got healthier and the relationships evolved and everybody kind of grew as a result, which that was surprising. And the more that the space I was making for myself became natural in the dynamics. Whereas before it seemed imperative that I had to do all these things. Mm. And then it evolved to, well, maybe I don't. Maybe that was my identity that I put on myself or or what made me feel significant or important at that time yes. that I needed. And and that really wasn't the whole truth. It was a partial truth. 
Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're not siloed. Like, I mean, we don't just have the career and then like the, like, if we're not, if I, I believe if we follow what we're passionate about, which you did and yeah. which you are doing, then that positive energy that cre- gets created when you're doing things that you're passionate about, that gets spilled into other aspects of your life. So that spills into positive, positive energy into your relationships and in your health and all other aspects, because we're not like we're a one or a human being. So if you are full of passion, what you're passionate about, it will, like as, as your example, yeah. translate into other areas of your life. So that's really important to point. So in terms of like, we talked, you talked a little bit about like what, when you decided to become an entrepreneur and, and it's because you saw these things that need to fixing or what are some, like, what are some other things that triggered that desire in you to become an entrepreneur? Yeah. So I grew up around, my dad originally was an attorney, but then he became an entrepreneur in his, I think, early 40s. My mom, they were divorced, but my mom always had side gigs that she was working on, mostly for income, but also she kind of liked doing different things and trying new things. So I think Mm -hmm. those, being around those growing up sparked that interest. I mean, I was, I was kind of already mowing lawns when I was a teenager, which is, you don't usually see teenage (laughs) girls doing that, but because I wanted to run a business, but I didn't know it. What was so ironic was I always thought I was going to marry the person and I wanted to marry the person who was going to run a business because that was exciting to me to be around that. And I, every company I worked for, I watched how the businesses were run. I studied them because I just liked doing that, not because I was trying to accomplish anything. It was just what I enjoyed. But it took Mm -hmm. me forever to put those pieces together and realize, oh, wait, I'm the one that's supposed to do do this. And this is what I love. This is my actual passion in my zone of genius eventually, too, like that I didn't yeah, realize. Yeah. It, it, so I just I'm always floored by that, that it took me until my mid 40s. And even then, when I was trying not starting a new business, I still didn't realize that that was my passion until I got about a year or two into it and went. I could t- I could like take the fear, tone the fear down a little bit and start to yeah. lean into the maybe I can do this. And then it was like, holy cow, I love this. I, I love doing this. Let's do another. <laughs> let's let's just start another company. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah, it's so funny, right? When we give ourselves the permission to be who we are, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So yeah. You, you mentioned that, that word fear, which we all have. And so when you were embarking on this, you know, your transition to being an entrepreneur and starting your businesses, there must have been many blocks hesitations and especially you know because you're starting in your 40s and yeah so how would you how did you kind of I don't know if you're overcome or lessen those fears or blocks and if you were to advise women who are maybe thinking about their own path moving forward what would you say to to them yeah, I had a couple of fears of one, I do I really am I going to figure this out? I'm not sure. Businesses don't usually survive, so can I can I survive? And but the biggest block for me personally was myself. That's what was shocking. And thank goodness I started to toy with building a little bit of support around me, meaning I needed emotional support when I was afraid. So I needed either things in my life like therapy or coaching, and and I needed to have sounding boards for when I hit those fears that were from my childhood, from those those unstable parts of my life that make me want to run. So when I would get scared, of course, I just I want to run. And and I had to try to sit in there and say, let me talk to somebody to see if I really need to run yet or if it's something Mm -hmm. from my past that's replaying. And that happened over and over and over again. But I evolved through that like every time. And I still hit those things, but they don't last as long. They're not as powerful. I can bounce out of them faster. But that was really because I built the emotional support. But then I also built some experts that I started to connect with as like mentors and that business support, people to go to ask questions. And that's the other thing. When you're growing up in a household that has a lot of challenges in it, you become really self-reliant. And and I had to work through that self-reliant and and actually open the door and say, I need to ask questions. I need some help. I need to validate this move mm-hmm. I want to make, or I need to hear from others because I was so used to being like, I can do this on my own. I can power through anything. I can survive. I can be scrappy. 
I actually had to unlearn some of those behaviors and mm-hmm. make make room for letting others in to support me. And and that was yeah. really challenging. Yeah. That's such an important point, honestly, because as women, we often think that we can muscle through things and mm-hmm. just get it all done and we can do it all. And asking for help, I don't know, sometimes it seems like a weakness. So I don't need, whereas I think in your example, and, and I, I fully agree, Obviously, I'm a coach, so that's, but whether it's a coach, a mentor, or someone who you can run your ideas yeah. by, colleagues, like somebody that you look up to, it's so important to ask for that help. And that that's, that's wonderful. And so you receive the support and the encouragement, as well as being able to kind of work through the things that you had gone through in the past. So yeah, that's a, that's a really great, great yeah, advice. We're, we're tough. Women are tough. We can do a lot, but but I also want to acknowledge I made mistakes or or I took I took baby steps towards things because it was hard to ask for help. So I just did what's the littlest thing I can ask for that helps me work that muscle a little more. And sometimes mm-hmm. I asked the wrong people or I came across really, really kind of insecure and unsure. That's OK. Forgive yourself. Like you're going to stumble at times and, and you're going to go to the wrong people at times. Like forgiveness and grace is a really big part of the process. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then making mistakes is a process of learning, right? I mean, yeah. if we don't make that, we can't, <laughs> nobody's perfect. So, I mean, yeah, I think that's, that kind of falls into, I also was in the corporate world before and I turned it on, was turned into being an entrepreneur. And I, I can understand the challenges of that because you're used to having everything done for you when you're in the corporate right. world, where now it's like everything. You have to do everything yourself. And there is a lot of challenges, but I, I would wonder to ask you what, as an entrepreneur, what is the rewarding part to that being an entrepreneur? I love it. I would say the biggest re- reward is having the freedom to explore things that interest me. That like, an exploration may not be everybody's thing that gets them excited, but that's my thing. And so it it was really fun to start to kind of open that door and go, oh, mm-hmm. I can this little cheap online class because I'm curious about it and I don't have to get permission from my boss. I'm the boss. So you have right. this freedom. I mean, there's a lot of responsibility too that's really heavy, but but you get this freedom to kind of test things out, navigate. And I love that. Like I'm my happiest doing that. Mm-hmm. What else? I would say that it challenges me in such a way that I have to grow and expand in new ways than I ever thought I would. I mean, I never, when I was younger, dreamt that I would be in the situation that I'm in, that I would be doing the things that I'm doing. And sometimes it's stressful and hard and I cry and I'm emotional, so I'll cry a lot through the process. But but at the same time, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have these moments of joy, these yeah. I can pause and celebrate things now and and just be like, oh, like I'm doing it. Like, I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know how far it's going to go, but I'm going to keep trying and see how I can take it. Why not? And why um, not? Right. And and now I have confidence that I get really insecure still at times. I just did the other day. I was at a conference, but depending on who I'm talking with and who I'm around, but at the same time, there's this bigger confidence piece internally that is, helps Mm -hmm. me rebound faster and says, you got this. Like you can, you can figure this out. You've been doing this for several years. You're going to keep doing it. You're going to keep figuring it out, whatever that is. So that's that's cool. Completely completely relate. If if you were to ask me five years ago, or just you are going to be a podcast host and it would be, yeah, right. Come on. Mm -hmm. Right. Because when I, I loved, I tell the story a bit is that when I was younger, I used to run around with a little fake microphone and interviewing people and pretending I was a reporter. And then here I am now, right? And I would never even really knew I, when I started, I don't know how to do any of this. And now I'm over a hundred episodes later and I love it. And it's, I'm, but then if I listen to my earlier episodes, it's like, oh my God. Right. You know, right. <laughs> and we learn, we grow, we test mm-hmm. things. And then that's where your security and your growth happens. And that. I think that's the case and it can be in corporate too, but this mm-hmm. As an entrepreneur, you, as you said, you have the freedom to do things that maybe you don't need permission from other people. You right. you follow your passions and and you fall and you go get up and and then you fall again and and so 
That's wonderful. So tell me a little bit, Teresa, about your business. And yeah. so how does this model differ from other yeah. recruiting firms? And why do you think that's important? Yeah, I think we're really designed our business. When I was working full time at companies, it was I saw a lot of executives spend too much money. They really did not buy the right tools or create the right processes that worked or could fluctuate with the ebbs and flows of a smaller to mid-sized business. So that was when I came up with a model that I thought would suit those businesses better. It's kind of a plug and play when you need it. And when you don't, you can turn it off. And it's more cost effective because it's an hourly model instead of standard recruiting firms that do 20%. And we come in so much cheaper, but we also have higher quality experts that are on our team. Because the other piece of that, what I did was developed a company that was flexible for stay-at-home parents or semi-retired people. And they are seasoned or they have quite a bit of experience. And then so they offer this great support and consultative kind of approach to the business. But again, it's only when you need it. It's not a full-time person. It's not ongoing. You can work with them for so many hours a week if you want to for short-term projects. And we actually work ourselves out of a job a lot of times, which is what we're, what we go, that's our goal to do so that our clients are set up and can, can continue to do their business really well. And then they come back to us when they need us. And we've developed a lot of recurring business that way and relationships and 95% of our business is referrals. So that seven years later, to me, that overall model is, is I've got a team that really loves the flexibility, really loves that they can deal with their things that happen in life that are complex. They can Mm -hmm. even take off long periods of time. They can step out for six months if they need to and then come back later. But then our clients also really like the quality level of people they're engaging with and and we're trying to give them insights about how to run their business better because we're looking at all different kinds of businesses and we can see the Mm -hmm. spectrum of things that are working, things that aren't working, new approaches. So we can kind of consult a little beyond just the hiring. Right. So the people that your team that you've placed in in their firms, are, are they, you said they're semi-retired, mostly semi-retired or are they women mostly, or is it whole, like, is are they people that generally, maybe they don't get those same opportunities in other yeah, in other job in other companies or like- I think I think it's people that want contract work so that it can be flexible, okay. but they may not want forty hours a week because they need some of their day to deal with a sick parent or to spend time with their family and their kids or go to kids sports or things like that. And so we've got a mix, mostly women, but we do have some men on the team as well who maybe are trying to help a parent who's ill kind of run their business, totally different kind of business on the side. And then they work with us when they have the extra time so they can kind of keep in their career and keep it moving. So we're really, we work really well with our people about being transparent, what they need, where they're at. So it's not scary to talk about the challenges they're going through when they're talking Mm -hmm. to me, which I think in most jobs you don't want to, you know, people feel like they can't talk about it or they get Mm -hmm. penalized for it. We're trying Mm -hmm. to flip that and say, totally let us know. We don't need to know everything in your life. Keep your privacy, but let us know the challenges and your availability, we work with that. And it's still at a good hourly rate that they are making better money than they would probably on their own. And they don't have to try and find clients. We're finding the clients. Right, And and they don't need to be working every single month. It can kind of be, it can fluctuate and come and go. It's just extra income to their families. Yeah, that's perfect. I think for, especially for women who are like in transition in their careers, for example, which is who I, speak to mostly is trying to either they've been in a company for many years, they're looking for something else, or they're looking to reduce their number of hours or have others looking after parents or whatever they are, whatever's happening. It's a great model because it offers the experience that they have as well as they're giving them employment. So amazing. One of the questions I had and I always, I would get a lot of hear a lot for, for my clients is that when women especially are transitioning in their careers and they're looking to do something new, they often feel like they need to get more qualified or they're not experienced enough or they're not good enough to do that next thing. And so that often prevents them from going for it, right? From, from putting themselves out there. So 
do you see that? And what would you advise? Yeah. You know, women like that who are, what's the best way to that build that confidence when transitioning? I think the really awesome thing about today is we're in this digital age where we can get training online and very inexpensively too. So, so I recommend if you're trying to transition into something, do your Google searches, find those classes or those little seminars you can join, even some certifications in those arenas that you want to move into, learn the fundamentals of those things, and then start connecting with other people that also do that job and ask them what's the most important in their job so you know where to focus your efforts. And then do some volunteer work for people that you know to get a little bit of that experience. You can have a full-time job, but still be a consultant on the side doing those projects so you start to build experience into those new areas and and build a little bit of a resume around that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those all doing all those things, training online, connecting, networking with people and volunteering that all builds confidence so that you... Exactly. You know, yeah. So again, it goes back to the taking the small steps and, and... But I think it also is really identifying what it is that you want to do because often we get stuck in doing because we've been doing it for 20 years or 30 years. But being open to the possibility that maybe it's something completely different. And that's, yeah, um, that's, that's what I do is like honing in on what is it, what is it like the balance between your strengths, your passions and your values? Like what, what right. do they connect? And because you've got the next half of your life to live. So you might as well do it, be doing it with something that you love to do. Right. So. And don't you find it's amazing that like when you're doing more of those things that you like, you actually get more energy to spend on things. And so I find now that if I'm getting really drained, it's actually my little warning sign that goes up that says, oh, what are you doing? That's just not in your wheelhouse of comfort, not even comfort, but just strengths of strengths. And then I look at, okay, who can help me with this? Because I need to get back in my wheelhouse of strengths. That's that's where I shine. Oh, that's so funny because I do this exercise where we actually ask my clients to like take a note of what they do on it on in a week. And there's red activities and there's green activities and those red activities deplete your energy and the green activities increase your energy and do more of the green activities. And can you delegate or reduce the number of red activities because they're just draining you? You know, so that's in line that. with what you said. Yes. yes. I think that's yes. fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, wonderful. So great. So tell me anything new with your businesses or anything that you're working on that you're going to share and also where people can find, find yeah. you. And, yeah. So, so in the recruiting business, the first business I created, there's we've actually expanded now to offer human resource fractional services as well. So we're launching those this week or we're expanding that a bit this week. And then the second company is Tag for HR. And that company is actually a membership platform that supports human resource professionals because of all the challenges they've gone through over the last couple of years and how human resources is evolving and changing quickly. We decided to create a forum for professionals to come and get that support, get resources, guides, and coaching to help them function better in their job and be happier in their job as well. So so you can find me through either one of those companies or on LinkedIn. I'm one of a handful of Intags, I-N-T-A-G, if you look that up, and I'm Teresa. But yeah, just reach out, connect with me. And, and a lot of times we provide free resources for small businesses or HR professionals in each company that you can access. So I do recommend that connect with me and, and you'll start to see those get promoted on LinkedIn. Just yes, that sounds great. Wonderful services and opportunities for all, all kinds of people. So I would I would ask you, like, what would, if, if just to kind of end off and maybe some words of wisdom for women who are listening, who are thinking, okay, what's next in my career? Oh, I'm scared, but I, I really want to do something. I have this inner voice that's telling me something. So any, any words of wisdom from for me. <laughs> I think when you're first starting to do the transition and that make a list of all the things you've done well in your previous career, put that up like near your computer screen or somewhere where you sit all the time, because you are going to go through the fear. You are going to feel like you can't do it sometimes or you're paralyzed. But looking at those strengths, those list of strengths might remind you 
to go back to that quiet voice that is saying it wants to do something different and trust that quiet voice because that quiet voice will take you all the way. I love it. I, I, I love it. The quiet voice, the inner voice, the inner being. Yeah, exactly. I listen to her every day. So thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, well, it was so wonderful good. having you on, Teresa. It was so good to and talk good, with you. Thank you for and, having me. And, and good luck with, uh, with everything you, you do. Thank you so much. I trust you enjoyed this episode with Teresa Intag and it provided you with some fuel to move forward if you're thinking of embarking on your own entrepreneurial journey. Here are her key takeaways. Number one, early struggles can become strengths and starting as an entrepreneur is inherently messy. Accept imperfection and focus on progress. Number two, Take small, consistent steps to build confidence and overcome self-doubt. Reach out to mentors or coaches for emotional support and guidance. Number three, avoid getting stuck in routine. Stay deliberate in your actions and embrace the freedom to explore your passions. And number four, regularly review your achievements to boost your confidence and trust your inner voice to guide you on your entrepreneurial journey. For this week's Motivational Monday segment, I was intrigued to learn about a woman by the name of Mary Kay Ash, who you may have heard of. Mary Kay Ash started her career in sales, working for various direct sales companies. Despite her success, she faced a lot of gender discrimination and it was repeatedly passed over for promotions in favor of less experienced men. At the age of 45, Mary Kay Ash founded Mary Kay Cosmetics in 1963 with her life savings of only $5,000. Her company quickly grew into a multi-billion dollar enterprise empowering women through direct sales opportunities. Mary Kay Cosmetics is now renowned for its pink Cadillacs and its commitment to empowering women in business. If these examples of my own journey and that of Teresa Intag or even Mary Kay Ash have left you curious to pursue your own, but you just don't know where to begin, let's have a chat. Book a call with me today to discuss how your inner passions can be turned into a lucrative business at any age. You can reach out to me today at Kavita, K-A-V-I-T-A, at itsmytimenowcoaching.com. That's Kavita at itsmytimenowcoaching.com. If you're also feeling stuck and don't know why, you can also download my Negative Energy Blocks Guide with a link in the show notes. This guide will explain what type of blocks you may be facing and give you practical insights on how to overcome blocks like imposter syndrome, your low own limiting beliefs, and your inner critics. Remember, let's have a conversation. Reach out to me today at kavita at itsmytimenowcoaching.com. And in the meantime, you can download our handy Negative Energy Blocks Guide with the link in the show notes today. Thank you for being here, my friend. Until next time, stay well and stay motivated. <laughs>